this is a video introduction of our HD CVI DVR. Uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, some of the things that you will find in the uh, local interface or so the interface at the DVR itself with the monitor attached to it. And uh, if you have interacted with our DVRs before, this unit is uh, similar, if not the same, as all of our DVRs we sell, uh, including, you know, some of the features of uh, menus and, and stuff like that. I mean, it's, if you're familiarized with our DVR, this is going to be a breeze. So you will have a mouse. It's easier to uh, do anything with a mouse because it's, it's just right click, left click. That's pretty much it. So to start, we're going to right click and we're going to log into the DVR. And this is the main interface. So you have search, info, settings, advanced, backup, and shutdown. Um, let's start with the search interface. Again, if you have seen uh, this interface before or you're familiarized with uh, any of our DVRs, this is the same way, operates the same way. So you have here on the, on the top, you have the calendar, and you can simply pick a day, and uh, you can just uh, click on any of the times you wanted to play footage, and that's it. It will start playing footage. From here, you can stop or you can pause. You can go and play backwards if you wanted to. Just so you know, if you hover over every, on any of these uh, buttons right here, you can find that uh, it will pop up the uh, what it does, basically. Um, for example, if I wanted to do a smart search and just click on it, and I just select the areas where I wanted to see just smart search, when something went through this areas, and basically just hit the smart search button again, and it will basically pull up uh, video just when something happened on that area. Obviously it's at night so you will have a lot of things that might trigger that. For example that car trigger that, uh, you know lights can trigger that. So that is exactly how easy and how uh, user-friendly is to find footage. Uh, let's stop that by just right-clicking. Okay, another thing that I can do is I can click on any time here in the bottom of the page and I, I can pull up any video if I wanted to. I can just hit play and I can just select any of the time frames in here. Also here on the bottom you will see 24 hours, 2 hours, 1 hour and 30 minutes. So as it's playing you can change how you'll see those intervals of times or footage and it, it will be easier for you to click. Uh, I can choose uh, one hour if I wanted to and so on. It's very simple, very easy to use. Let's go back. Let's go to the info. Under info you will find some uh, settings and some functions such as the uh, capacity of the hard drive, how much total space and free space the uh, uh, hard drive currently have. Uh, you can see how much bandwidth each of the cameras are uh, using right now per channel. You can see logs. You, can, you have all sort of logs that you can uh, pull up anytime you want. You also can see the version and you can update it from here. You can see who is online uh, from a computer. You can disconnect them or you can block them. And the network info, you know, it tells you um, uh, what IP you have on your on your device, uh, how much is the network load at, the, at a particular time, etc. It's very user friendly, it's very self explanatory. Uh, let's go to settings, and here you have seen this before. Under general, you configure general settings such as time, uh, how the DVR is going to be uh, recording, if it's recording 24 7, how long the, the files are going to be, and so on. Uh, you can tell the hard drive to stop recording or override. Very easy, very self-explanatory too. Uh, you have the startup wizard is by default on. I turn it off, but just basically when you reboot the unit, it will ask you to, uh, if you wanted to uh, configure your unit using the uh, setup wizard. So you can do it from there if you wanted to. Encoding, here you can set up how the DVR and the cameras are going to be uh, configuring how the DVR is going to be recording, what resolution, uh, based on the type of recording, if it's 24-7, or if it's, uh, let's say, motion, if you wanted to. 
the extra stream is uh, the resolution that you use to view the cameras or to view your uh, video over your phone. So our DVRs have dual streams, so it's easier for you. If you have a lower uh, bandwidth, you can, instead of pulling the mainstream, which is normally higher, and it's what the DVR uses to record, uh, you can pull up instead the uh, extra stream, so it's a lower resolution, but that doesn't mean if uh, viewing the camera at a lower resolution, the DVR will be recording like that. That's not what it is. It's just for viewing purposes. You can enable audio if you have to. Uh, only channel one for the four channel and the eight channel. And you have different audio source. Uh, you have normal and you have HD CVI. If the camera is an HD CVI and has built in audio, you will choose HD CVI. But if not, if you're using, for example, uh, Cat6 over Baylands with, vi with video and audio, um, you, c you have to choose normal for you to hear the audio, okay? Um, this is only on channel one, it just affects channel one. Let's go back, let's go to schedule. Very simple here. You can choose the channels that you wanted to change the schedule, the dates, and the periods. You can mix and match. You can have one period, for example, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. to be regular recording, and then out of those hours, you can set it up as motion by setting different periods in here. Okay, uh, let's go to network. Very simple instructions here, very simple uh, settings. You can uh, change the IP of your DVR. By default, is 192.168.1.108. I change it for this video purpose. Um, HTTP poor, TCP poor is very simple. You can also go to network settings and you have more features here that you can set. For example, if you wanted to enable uh, email notification, this is the place for you to uh, enable that feature. Uh, if you wanted to um, enable NTP, DDNS, I mean, you name it. It's very easy, uh, you know, very simple to configure. Let's go back. Uh, detect. Here is how you configure the detection or the sensitivity of the cameras when uh, motion happens. So this is a per channel basis. Just make sure that you do not copy that to all of the channels because it's uh, not a good idea. It's not going to work correctly. Um, uh, also, you have here the region. This is something that we added to this uh, particular DVR, and some other DVRs have it. Just basically, you check the parts or checks the areas that you don't want motion to be detected. For example, I don't want this tree to uh, trigger motion on this camera, nor this area right here. So what I do is to just make sure I select it by just simply uh, right clicking on it, I'm sorry, left clicking on it, and then move it, you know, drag in to the space that I want it to, and then right click to go back, and then I can save it. Now. If I wanted to test it and I wanted to see exactly what areas are uh, masked, I can just click the test button on channel one, for example, and it will show me here these are the areas that they're going to be masked. Very simple, very cool feature. You can enable a uh, tour, you can enable snapshots if you wanted to, uh, you can show a message when uh, motion happens, uh, you can enable uh, message notification or email notification for uh, this particular channel when motion happens as well. Pan tilt zoom. Very important. Uh, HDCBI offers pan tilt zoom over the same cable, meaning uh, you run one cable, for example, you run a Siamese cable, and you can access the OSD of the camera using the pan tilt zoom controllers over the same cable. So you don't have to run an extra cable like a PDZ camera, you have to run RS-45 control wire on the back of a DVR, back in the camera, and you have to change addresses, and I mean, it, it becomes a little bit more complex, but HDCVI eliminates that, it just transmits audio, uh, RS-45 controlling, and video over the same cable. So, uh, back into the Pantil Zoom controllers, uh, you're going to go to the channel that you have that camera on, I have in channel 1 and 2, and you're going to change, by default is this. Uh, it's serial, known, one, address, uh, about rate is 9600, and the rest is the same. So for this particular camera, I'm going to choose HDCVI. The protocol is DHSD1. And the address and, and baud rate, you can leave it like that for every channel. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I just hit save. Or if I wanted to copy 
that to all of the channels. I can just simply click on it, copy to all of the channels, and save it, and I'm done. Now, look at this. I'm going to open the OSD of this camera by just right clicking on the channel, go to full screen, or I can simply go like this, right click, pantle zoom, and I can click enter menu. Now, you will not be able to see it like that, so that's why I double click on it. So now, this is the OSD of the camera. From here, I can just uh, move it, you know, access any of the features going up and down. If I wanted to enter a menu, and just, for example, I'm on the day and night uh, functions right there, and just click enter, and right there, I'm on the day and night, nine date, and return. It's extremely easy. It's, it's never been that easy before. So uh, this is the beauty of the HDCVI. It's so easy to control. It's so easy to deploy. I mean, you name it. It's uh, uh, very cool features added here. Let's go back to main menu, settings, display. You can modify the channel names. Uh, you can change the resolution of the display that is connected to it. You can enable tour. And this is a cool uh, feature. Uh, that this DVR has, you can add different ways of how the touring will be or how the groups are going to be. So if you want group one uh, order to be, or the new group to be one, four, three, and two, that's it. You just add it there, no problem. It's very user uh, friendly the way that you now uh, interact with the tour the settings of it. Let's delete that and click OK. Uh, favorites, same thing. You can have a camera to be your favorites. You can have, if you like it like this, uh, you can just simply click a current setup and then it will uh, basically save that last configuration you have. Uh, this is zero channel encode. This is basically a feature that you enable on the DVR and then you should be able to access the DVR um, over the internet and then you can view all of your channels on one channel of the web service. For example, you have an A channel and you want one particular channel of the web service interface to be all of your channels or all of the cameras, just simply uh, enable this feature and then you can enable how the resolution of those cameras are going to display there and uh, just hit save and save. And uh, on the web service there is a function on the right hand side while you're viewing uh, the layout of your cameras and then you can uh, enable that feature. You can just basically click on it and view eight cameras. They are going to be very small but you can view eight cameras on one particular window and then fill up the next windows with other cameras if you like to. Just uh, consider that that's going to increase the bandwidth usability at the time that you're doing that, okay? Uh, if you wanted to default the entire unit, just hit default and then you can choose what you want to default. Very self-explanatory, very easy. Let's go back to advance, HD management. Um, you can basically format the drives. You can uh, enable an alarm when the a disk uh, has an error or when the network is disconnected. You can tell the DVR to uh, enable a buzzer. I mean, you name it. It's very simple, very self-explanatory. And normality. Uh, same thing here. You can just enable uh, sounds. You can uh, send emails when all of these events happen. Record. You can turn off and turn on uh, channels that you wanted to record. If you wanted to record 24-7, you just basically click it a uh, change this to manual, and all of the channels will be uh, recording 24-7 non-stop regardless of the setting of the schedule. So if you wanted to uh, be uh, governed by what the schedule said, then change this to schedule and uh, whatever the schedule is said, this is how the, uh, came, you know, how the DVR is going to be recording. Uh, if you wanted to stop all of them at the same time, just simply click stop and that's it. Extra stream recording allows you to play back files from your uh, handheld device with Tech Process Plus. If this is not enabled and you're trying to play back files, you're not going to be able to do so until you enable this feature. And then from that point on, then you can play back files from your phone. All right, let's go back to accounts. You can uh, add users, add rights, passwords. You know, you can tell some users to 
uh, being able to monitor certain channels, etc. It's very easy. Um, auto maintenance, you can basically tell the DVR to auto reboot every day at 2 or anytime you want. Uh, auto delete files, it's basically just hide, uh, hitting the files, um, you know, based on the time that you put in here. So if you say three days, from that point on, if you try to search something that happens three days ago, you're not going to be able to. It's just basically the, um, the days that they're going to display on the calendar. Let's go back. Text overlay. If uh, you have a POS system, you can enable text overlay here over the, over the Ethernet. Uh, and then here are the configurations for, uh, you know, the source IP, the destination IP, and what channels are going to be overlaying that info, etc. Um, we can go to the configuration backup, and then you can back up all of the settings of the DVR itself as a whole. So if you like how you configure it, and uh, something happened, you get a new unit of the same kind, you can just then re-export and import the files into the DVR, and then you should be good to go in no time. Uh, backup, this allows you to backup footage of the unit, as long as you have an SD card, or even though if you have a, a USB DVD burner connected to it, you'll hit detect, and, um, and will basically recognize that, and then you can use that as your backup device. Lastly, um, to end this video, we're going to click shut down, and then here you have these options. You can shut down the unit, you can log out the menu user, uh, and log out menu user means that you're just logging out of the current user that you're using to, uh, for example, this demonstration, I want to log out of the 888s, and I want to log in with uh, a different user, so I can choose any other user I want. Uh, or if you wanted to turn on the DVR, you can just simply hit shut down and the DVR will turn off. Um, I hope this video is informative to you. Um, also, uh, we, we currently have uh, an 8-channel uh, series, which is the same type of interface. There is no difference except the amount of channels. Um, you can see this great technology, uh, HDCVI. I'm able to uh, bring the OSD over one cable. There is many advantages about this unit against uh, analog uh, systems and especially cost effective. Um, I hope you know you like this video and I hope you like this technology and uh, thank you for watching.